I'd like to talk about the big losses short sellers had not only in 2022 but also in 2023 today. In the past week, short sellers have been losing a lot of money. The community has lost a huge amount of money, some figures put the amount lost in the hundreds of billions of dollars. In 2022, hedge funds lost a total of $28 billion, which was the most since the 2008 financial crisis. This information comes from research done by LCA Investments, a fund of funds firm connected to the Edmund Deald Group. It's important to note that even though some hedge funds made big profits, the overall net loss for the hedge fund industry was still a huge $28 billion. One can't help but wonder how much bigger this loss would have been if we didn't count the funds that made money would it have been $300 billion, $350 billion, $400 billion, or even more the problems didn't just happen in 2022, they've continued into 2023. Notably, even some of the best traders who did amazingly well in 2022 have been dealing with big losses this year. For example, Haydar, who had an amazing 93% return on his fund in 2022, lost 32% in March 2023 alone and 44% overall. Data of the year Pierre had a 59% gain in 2022, but he was down 23% in March and 40% so far this year. Guys like Chris and Adam also lost 15% in March and 25% so far this year. Adam even shut down his hedge fund because of the losses. These losses were caused by a number of things, including the failure of Silicon Valley Bank, which caused a liquidity problem in the banking sector and forced some hedge funds to sell their positions. Along with rising prices and interest rates in 2022 and 2023, the bond markets were unstable and unclear, which all contributed to these huge losses. The situation got worse last week, as shown by a tweet from Pete Chi saying that hedge funds with positions in crowded short trades suffered during a stock rally on Thursday. This means that many hedge funds that had shorted heavily traded stocks, such as new companies like Coinbase and Carvana, lost a lot of money because of the stock rally, according to an article. One of the worst days of the year for global hedge funds that use computers to trade stocks. This is because of the sudden rise in stocks, which was caused by hope that interest rate hikes around the world were over. It was hard for regular fund managers to get out of trades when they were too crowded, especially those with short positions and highly traded stocks. This caused them to lose a lot of money. Moreover, the S&P 500 has recently moved out of a downward trend that had been going on for a while. In opposition to the high borrowing costs for AMC seen in July, this change has happened. As the market goes up, short sellers may find it harder and harder to get their money back. As we've already talked about, this is especially scary for short sellers of highly shorted stocks like upstarts like upstarts like Affirm, Carvana, and Coinbase. When short sellers are under pressure, they usually start by closing their short positions in big tech stocks like NVIDIA. Both Tesla and Microsoft, if the stress doesn't go away, they might close short positions in names that are heavily shorted before they deal with their MEM stock shorts. Not only are MEM stock shorts the biggest and riskiest, hedge funds don't want to close these positions because doing so could ruin not only the fund but also the hedge fund industry as a whole or even cause a stock market crash. Closing AMC and GameStop shorts could cause a short squeeze, especially if synthetic shorts are also closed, which could bankrupt market makers and wreck the stock market as a whole, needing the Federal Reserve to step in. Stepan Vikstrom tweeted about how accurate Dr. Marco Metzler's statements were. At first, he didn't believe Metzler's claim that Evergrande would go bankrupt in 2021, but he later admitted that Metzler was right when Evergrande filed for Chapter 15 bankruptcy. Three months ago, Stefan Vikstrom also brought up Metzler's earlier statement from December 2021, in which he not only said that Evergrande would fail but also told investors to buy GameStop and AMC because of Metzler's track record of success. Stefan said that investors should be patient and think about the chance that Metzler's statements about AMC and GameStop will also come true. It's important to note that while Meter's predictions are similar to those of many other analysts, these predictions are often ignored or played down by the mass media, which spreads fear, uncertainty, and doubt. In a related story, a former top executive of an investment fund pleaded guilty to a $294 million securities fraud conspiracy. This former co-founder and executive set up a complicated scheme to scam many investors out of $294 million. As the losses mounted, Efforts were made to hide the fraud, showing how losses can be hidden until they are discovered. This makes me wonder if some funds, short sellers, institutions, and market makers are doing the same thing, trying to hide their losses and hoping that their complex web of deception stays intact. On a related note, Charles Payne took to Twitter to ask how a company could get 1.2 million customers 
and allegedly steal $9 billion while enjoying media attention and political power. He gave hints that the person responsible wasn't Sam Bankman Fried and shared a picture of FTX's complicated group structure, showing how different directors and shareholders are represented as separate companies in different countries. In short, short sellers have lost a lot of money in the financial world, and 2022 and 2023 will be the worst years ever for them. These losses are caused by many things, such as the state of the market, the failure of financial institutions, and changes in the value of different types of assets. In the meantime, accurate predictions like those made by Dr. Marco Mettler are becoming more well-known, even though the mainstream media doesn't like them. Also, the fact that financial fraud could stay hidden shows how important it is for financial markets to be open and watchful. Finally, the power and actions of companies like FTX are being closely watched, which shows how important it is for regulators to keep an eye on them and hold them responsible. That's all we have for you today, guys. What do you think about AMC stock? Let us know in the comments below, and thanks for watching.